Okay, let's talk about tangent lines to circles. First and foremost, when you have circles, the center is the most important point. From there, you have your radius, which is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. All right, and then if we introduce this idea of tangent line, a tangent line touches the circle at exactly one point, one and only one point. And that point, of course, is the point of tangency. We've talked about this before. The other interesting thing about tangents is that they are perpendicular to the radius at that point of tangency. And that's going to be really important as we attempt to write the equation of a tangent line, which is what this video is all about. So we're going to sort of dive into this a little bit uh, in more detail than some of the previous videos. And uh, we're going to pay particular attention to how to write the equation of these tangent lines when we're given a circle and we're given a point of tangency. So let's get started. Number one, what is the equation of the line that is tangent to this circle and it goes to this point? So first things first, the circle has a center of 0, 0 and it has a radius of, well this is r squared, right? This is r squared. So the radius is the square root of that. Okay. And let's see, the square root of 145, I, I know that the square root of 144 is 12, so this is going to be a little bit more than 12. So it's about equal to 12.05 or something like that. And if I were to graph this thing, right, real simple little graph, nothing very detailed, but I'm centered at 0, 0, and I have a radius of 12. So the radius of 12 will look something like this. And that's not too bad. This point, negative 1, comma 12, is right there. All right, so I, I'm looking to figure out the equation of the tangent line that goes through that pink point, negative 1, 12, and is tangent to this circle. So what I'm going to need to do is draw in the radius at that point. So I'm going to try to do this as carefully as possible. The radius at that point looks something like this. These, of course, are perpendicular to each other. And to write this equation, I'm going to need a slope and a y-intercept. That's my, my job right now. Okay, so to do that, let's think about what the slope of my radius is. So the radius has a slope that is, of course, the change in y over the change in x, right? It's rise over run. It's rise over run. So this thing goes up 12 units and left 1 goes up 12 units and left 1 unit, which means it's positive 12 over negative 1. So my slope, my radius slope is negative 12. Okay. A line that's perpendicular to another line has a slope that is the opposite reciprocal. So if this has a slope that is negative 12, this perpendicular line is going to have a slope that's positive 1 over 12. Right, you just take the opposite sign, if one's positive, one's negative, and you just flip them over, you reciprocate the fraction. All right, so we have y equals mx plus b. We know our m is positive 1 twelfth, and we also know that it goes through this point. Well, that point is the y value is 12 and the x value is negative 1. So 12 is equal to negative 1 12th plus b. I'm looking to find the y-intercept. Let's add 1 over 12 to both sides. So I have 12 and 1 12th 
is equal to my B value. So that's 145 over 12. All right, so my final answer has the slope 1 12th and the y-intercept of 145 over 12. And that would be the answer. Now, there's some technology out there, of course, that we can sort of confirm this with. And I recently started using the, the program GeoGebra a lot in my class. So let's go ahead and use it right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter in x squared plus y squared equals 145 in GeoGebra. So down here in the input, I'm going to put x squared plus y squared equals 145. And I'm going to press enter. I need to zoom out. So I'm going to go up here to graphics view, zoom out, and see if we can zoom this out. There we go. And let's just kind of move it so it's in the center. And maybe I'll make it a little bit easier to see. I'll go to right-click object properties and make it you know, make it red and a little bit thicker. There we go. All right, so next thing I want to do is I want to put a point. So I'll go over here to point. I want to put a point at negative 1, 12, which would be somewhere up there. I didn't get it perfectly, so I'm going to go ahead and try it again. If I get rid of this thing and put another one, if I put it right there, I can manually put this in, negative 1 and then 12. All right, and that jumps onto the circle. Now if I want to draw a line, a tangent line, I need to go to tangent, click on A, and click on the circle, and it gives me my equation, right? But it gives me my equation that's not really in slope-intercept form. So maybe what I'll do is just check to make sure. I'm going to check to see if my answer here, 1 over 12x plus 145 over 12, is the same as this one. So let's go Oops. y equals 1 divided by 12 x plus 145 divided by 12. And when I press enter, they should be exactly on the same line. They should be the same line. So this is the one I just entered. It actually simplified it for me. If I make that one blue, let's see. Yeah, it turns out it's exactly the same line. So that's good. That's a good thing. So I'm right. And if I wanted to, of course, I can go ahead and I can put in my center at zero, 0, and maybe a line segment that represents the radius right there. All sorts of cool stuff you could do with this. All right, so let's keep going. Number two, write the equation of the line that is tangent to the circle. 2x squared, 2y squared, 196. Well, first things first, I have to get rid of that 2. So let's go x squared, y squared. We're going to divide everything by 2, 98. All right, and it's going through this point of tangency. So maybe what I'll do is just <clears throat> graph this thing. So I'll put 98 there. I'll get rid of this point. I'll get rid of this point, and I'll get rid of that line. And I'm looking for negative 7, negative 7. Negative 7, negative 7. Negative 7 negative 7. There it is. Okay, let's draw a tangent. Tangent to the circle at negative 7, negative 7. Okay, so I have my answer right there. <clears throat> Again, if I wanted to put my radius in there, I'd go put my center and then a segment that connects A and B. Alright, so I'm using GeoGebra to kind of construct some stuff for me. It gives me the equation. It gives me the equation. Negative x minus y equals 14. Negative x minus y equals 14. If we get that in slope-intercept form, I get negative x minus 14. All right. <coughs> Let's do that algebraically. Let's see if this is right. So here, here we go. I have a center at 0, 0. 
All right, I have a center at zero, zero. The slope of this radius is going to be rise. So I'm rising negative 7 over run, which is negative 7. So the radius slope is negative 7 over negative 7, which is positive 1. So that means the tangent line has a slope that is the opposite reciprocal of positive 1, which is negative 1. So my tangent, my tangent slope is, po is uh, negative 1. All right, and to write the equation of a line, all you need is the slope and a y-intercept. So we have the slope. All we need now is our b value, our y-intercept. So let's just throw this point in, because I know that the line goes through that point. So negative 7 equals negative 1 times negative 7 plus b. Negative 7 <clears throat> is equal to 7 plus b. So b is negative 14. So y is equal to negative 1 times x minus 14 and what do you know it's exactly the same so that's good let's keep going number three <coughs> the center this time is at three comma zero and it goes through I'm looking for the line the tangent line that goes through six comma five so let's go ahead and graph this thing first so I'll go to GeoGebra just to get a really good idea of what this thing looks like. I'm going to change this. And I'm dealing with a 34 at the end. So I'll graph that. I'm going to get rid of all the other stuff here. And I'm going to put a point at 6.5. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw a tangent. This point, pick this circle. There we go. There's my answer. 3x plus 5y equals 43. 3x plus 5y equals 43. If I get that, if I get y by itself, I get negative 3 fifths x plus 43 over 5. Alright, so let's check that. Let's see if we can do this algebraically. I need to find the length of my radius. All right, so what I'll do is, or not the length of it, but the slope of it, rather, sorry. I need to find the slope of my radius. But my radius, my center, rather, is not at 0, 0. It's at, it's over here. Let me move this. It's at 3, comma 0. So if I can move this, maybe I can, I'll just go up here. So I need to change my B value to my b point to 3 comma 0 so let me start over here uh, that's not what I want delete let's put another one in here now I can define it how I want to I'm a little rusty with my GeoGebra I'm not super good at it yet alright so there's my center I want to draw a segment from here to here okay I need to know the slope of this radius. All right, to find the slope of a line, all you need to do is know your slope formula. Right? It's the change in y over the change in x. I know that my radius has a positive slope. I just need to take my y values and subtract them. So take 5 minus 0. 5 minus 0 divided by 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3. So this is 5 over 3. That's the slope of my radius. <coughs> the tangent line is going to have a slope that is the opposite reciprocal of that. Okay, so I need to find my tangent slope. Tangent slope is negative 3 over 5. Make this negative, flip it over. Okay. And there's that, so that's kind of a good thing. When we write the equation of this tangent line, we need the y-intercept as well. So I'm going to use this point. 5 is equal to negative 3 fifths times 6 plus b. A little bit of arithmetic here, negative 18 over 5 plus b. If I add 18 over 5 to both sides, 
I need to change this to 25 over 5. So that's 43 over 5. So my B value is 43 over 5. So finally, I've got the equation of my tangent line. I have my slope of the tangent, which is right here. And I've got my y-intercept. So I'm finished. Let's check to make sure that it's exactly the same. It is. Moving on. All right, this one. Go ahead and pause it, see if you can get it. My center is 9, negative 7. And it goes through this point. I'm not going to use GeoGebra for this one. I'm just going to go right into it. So my radius goes from my center to this point. So I'm going to take my slope formula, negative 10 minus negative 7 over 1 minus 9. So this is going to be negative 3 over negative 8, which is positive 3 over 8. Which means my tangent, my tangent slope is negative 8 over 3. It's the opposite reciprocal of this. OK, y equals negative 8 over 3x plus b. And I'm going to find my b by using that point. The y is negative 10, and the x is positive 1. So a little arithmetic here. Negative 10 is equal to negative 8, th 8 thirds plus b. I'm going to add 8 thirds to both sides. Common denominator is negative 30 over 3 which is this, plus 8 over 3 is negative 22 over 3. So my equation is negative 8 thirds x minus 22 over 3. And I'm done. And you can check that on your graphing calculators or like what I'm using is this GeoGebra app. Last one. What is the equation of a line that is tangent to this crazy looking circle? and through this point. Well, first and foremost, <coughs> let's get those twos out of there. They're both the same, so that means that we're, we are dealing with a circle. Let's just multiply everything by two. When we do that, the numerators remain 16, 66 times two. All right, so this is 12, this is 13, this is 13, and this is, uh, let's see, two plus one is three. So 3, 3, 3, 2. OK. A little bit crazy, but no problem. We have, our numbers are a little bit bigger than we're used to. Our center is at 8, negative 63. I know that I need to find my radius slope. So I'm going to simply just find the slope between this point and this point. So let's do it. Take the y values and subtract them. Take the x values and subtract them. So negative 7 plus 63 is 56 over negative 14. So that's 28 over negative 7. That's ne negative 4. That's cool. Which means our tangent line is perpendicular to the radius. Remember, these are always perpendicular to each other. So make this positive and flip it over. So it's 1 fourth. So y is equal to 1 fourth x plus b. The tangent line goes through this point. So negative 7 is equal to 1 fourth times negative 6 plus b. I'm looking for my y-intercept. Negative 7 is equal to negative 6 over 4. Well, that's negative 3 over 2 plus b. I'm going to add 3 halves to both sides. So I have negative 14 over 2 plus 3 over 2, I need common denominators there. <clears throat> I get negative 11 over 2. So once you have y-intercept and your slope, you're ready to go. It's 1 fourth x minus 5 and a half. And that's it. So there you go. Some more practice with tangent lines and circles. So thank you for watching.